In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a Lichtenstein style piece of pop art. We're not going to do one of these portraits. We're going to start nice and simple with one of these Lichtenstein explosions. Uh, something like this pop of room, um, something like that. So to do this, I'm going to use Adobe Illustrator. Now Adobe Illustrator is a vector graphics uh, piece of software, so it doesn't create uh, pictures using pixels, it creates pictures um, using lines and it colors those lines in or it fills in the space between the lines. So we're going to do this using Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to go to File, New, Create a New Document, uh, perhaps a width of about 20, that will do me. Notice I'm measuring in centimeters and not pixels and that's because pixels aren't really that important, um, mainly because uh, Illustrator doesn't use pixels to draw, it uses the coordinate system and vectors to describe its uh, lines that it's drawing. So to draw in Illustrator, we use these tools over here. So I've got a pen tool, I've got a line tool, rectangle tool, paintbrush, and a pencil. And the pen tool allows me to put um, anchor points on a page. So there's my first anchor point and when I click somewhere else, it will draw a line between the two anchor points. And we call that um, a path. So you can see there, this is the path between the two points. That path is described as a vector. And that's why we call it vector graphics. And again, if I click, it just works out the, um, the vector between the two anchor points and draws a path between them. So that's our pen tool. Uh, we've got a line tool as well, which literally draws lines. Each of these are separate objects. So even if I start on the same anchor point, what we actually get is a separate shape and these do not join up. Whereas if I click on our original shape that I drew with the pen, this is one solid shape. All these paths, lines are actually joined together. Uh, I've also got the rectangle tool. Look at that, draws rectangles, hold shift, it should draw a square, marvellous. Um, there are other options too, like the ellipse. Again, I can draw ovals, or if I hold shift, it will give me a perfect circle. Um, so I don't want any of those, let's just uh, delete those. Um, I've got a paintbrush, which allows me to draw a line uh, freehand, and then it tries to work out the mathematical path to describe that line. So it basically puts anchor points along the path and tries to write an equation to describe it. So it doesn't do it perfectly, which is why it smoothed the line out slightly. And the pencil tool does very similar. Um, so you can see it doesn't actually draw uh, until you let go. But again, it's trying to describe the path that I drew with the pencil and again um, I don't want these so let's get rid of that. Now another bonus of doing vector graphics is that um, we can edit our objects or paths once we've drawn them and we do that with the direct selection tool. So if I wanted to change the shape that I've drawn that's not a problem. Um, I can grab these, move them out and do that. Let's just move that anchor point there. And actually, I'm looking at this and I could probably do with some more anchor points on there just to uh, change the shape a little bit more. And I can do that with my pen tool. I've got add anchor point. So if I find somewhere along the path where I want an anchor point, I can click. And let's add one in there. And then I can get my direct select tool. Let's move that. Uh, and let's move that. So I've now got uh, a nice shape. And again, I can scale all this. Um, and that's the basic drawing techniques behind Adobe Illustrator. Uh, but this doesn't look like what we set out to draw, which is one of these wonderful explosions. And you can see it's got these lovely curves on our explosion on this one, and again on that one, um, and in the background of the explosion there. So how do I do that with Illustrator? Well, I need to turn these corners into curves. So to do that, if I select a a corner, an anchor point, I've got this convert option here. So I can convert this anchor 
to a curve. And if I still want it to be a corner, I can always convert it back. And it goes from corner to curve to corner to curve. And when it's a curve, you'll notice these extra lines and what it calls handles. And the handles, if you move these around, change the equation that draws the pathway, uh, draws the curve. Um, so if I tweak these, I can basically create any curve um, uh, that I like. Now you'll notice that this works like a, a seesaw, so if one goes down, the other one goes up, and if this one goes down, the other one goes up. Um, so this is a bit frustrating because I want a nice point, so I've got the, the curve I want there to go up to a point, but this side is going further upwards. What I want to do is actually split this. I want this handle to come down while this one stays down. Now the way to do that is to hold the ALT key, the ALT key. So if I click ALT, grab the handle and pull it down, you can see I've now split the rubber bands and I get my point. So let's do it to this one, let's click on the anchor, turn it to a curve, so you can see we've lost our shape. Let's bring this handle down so we, we get up to a point. And let's split this one by holding Alt. And I can come down and do there. Now I want to convert the rest of these um, to curves. So there's a couple of ways I can do that. I can uh, just draw a little box around those to select the uh, anchors. I have to be on the Direct Select tool to do that and I can curve those. Or I can click on an anchor, hold Shift, click on the other anchors that I want to select. And again I can convert those like so. So all that remains is to make the rest of these pointy by clicking, grabbing a handle, pulling it down, grab the other handle, click Alt, click and drag, and I get my point. And I'm going to do that to the rest of them in super fast time. And there we have a little explosion. So that's, I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's click position that where I want it and that is a lovely explosion. So let's have a quick look at Liechtenstein. How does he do his explosions? Has this sort of blue line around the red, um, looks like a black line around the, the yellow on that one, black around the red and, and yellow there. Um, so let's put a black line around it. Um, let's thicken it up so it sort of matches the style that uh, Liechtenstein uses. So with my black arrow I've selected my shape and here on the I have path options. This black line around it is called a path. And if I go to, um, this black line is called the path. And if I go to here, this is the, the path color. I can say no color. And so we've basically got uh, a shape with no outline. I want this to be black. And we now call it a stroke. And I can change my stroke thickness here, so it becomes more obvious, which is uh, definitely what I want to do. And the other thing I can do is, instead of having this as a uniform thickness all the way around, I can actually change it. I can go here, and this it will go from thin to thick to thin. So you can see I started clicking here, so it's thin. About halfway around, it goes to its thickest, and then I finish clicking again here. So this is where it goes thin again. So that's okay. There are other options as well, plenty of shapes uh, within there. I'm gonna go for this second one so I get a bit of thin, thick, thin, and thick, and it just makes it um, a little bit more interesting. And this little um, drop down here gives me my fill color. So what color do I want my shape to be? So that's giving me a nice red explosion in the style of Liechtenstein. And I'm gonna pause there and save it. Now Liechtenstein doesn't have just one of these um, explosions. He has a few layered together. So if I go to Window and Layers, or F7 is my keyboard shortcut, it'll bring up my layer options. And you can see under layer one, there is um, a red path. Now I want a second one of these, so I'm going to go to edit and copy and let's go edit and paste. 
and you can see I now have two paths. So I'm going to go to the one that's behind and just select it. And let's change the color of that one to blue. And actually, let's get rid of the stroke altogether um, because the red one, I want to have that. If I didn't like the order they were in, I could always swap those around just by dragging and dropping. But I do want the red path at the front. So let's select the red one. Let's just move it to there. Let's get the blue one. Let's just move it off slightly. And I might even just rotate it round just to give it a slightly different angle uh, to the original. And that seems to work for me. Um, and if I wanted to, I could, I could add another one. Um, but I think what I'm going to do now is add some text. Let's add the word bang or pop or something uh, like that. So I'm just going to do a quick save before I do this. So to add text, I go to the type tool, T for type. Let's click on there and let's write something like uh, bang. Now that's pretty small. So I can go up here and change the size. Um, 72 still quite small, so let's, let's try 250. Let's see what that would look like. Oh, that's way too big. Um, so I can change it there, or I can scale it with uh, the handles if I'm on my direct select. So I've got my bang. So let's change my font into something a bit more impressive. Let's go, I don't know, maybe impact. There we go, that's a nice big bold bang like that. Um, let's change the color up here uh, to yellow, so that's the fill color. And of course I've got stroke just like I did with my shape. So let's give it a black outline and let's thicken that up a little bit. Not too much because that A was getting overrun. Now the only other thing I, I probably want to do is perhaps have a little bit of an overlap um, with these characters. So if I go to um, character over here, um, I can um, bring these closer. So that just makes it a little bit more comic book like. There we go, we're beginning to get a little bit of an overlap. Maybe a bit more, bang, smashing. Looks a bit funny now, but don't worry about that. What I'm now going to do is go to here and make an envelope. I'm gonna add some shape to my text. So if I do a preview, I get to see what it looks like. So that's bang in an arc. Um, that's quite a lot. I don't want it quite like that. And let's add some horizontal shift. That gives me a nice bang. Uh, what about that way? No, let's definitely uh, do it that way. Any vertical? Yeah, maybe like that. I think that gives me a nice bang. Let's click OK. And let's position that slap bang in the middle. <laughs> um, let's just resize it, maybe a little bit smaller so it's not too imposing and you can still see some of the explosion. And let's save that out, file save. And there I have um, a Liechtenstein style uh, bang.